All right, so after that nice, brisk morning stroll to get the blood flowing, I'm in slightly <laughs> less clothing now. And we are heading towards this place right here, which is the uh, Olympic Complex uh, Center for what was originally the 1932 Games and was meant to house the uh, IOC and then was later expanded for the 1980 Games. So from everything I can read, the place is open to the public. You can go in and wander around and actually get to see the arenas, including the Miracle on Ice uh, arena. So I'm really hoping it is as open and accessible as it seems like it is. So let's keep our fingers crossed and uh, go over here and check this out. Oh, look, can you, can the camera pick that up? You can see where we're going a little bit later. You see in the distance there, the, uh, where is it here? Is that it out there? The ski jumps. But for right now, we're gonna go and check this out. isn't a scale but and then later here's we're going to the uh, ski jumps and then I mentioned before the white face mountain all the way up there you see a mirror lake here where the town is like placid it's up there so I mean it seems like we can go and check out these arenas which is super cool mm -hmm. Let's delay ourselves a little bit here and go and check out the 1932 rink first, the original rink. I think there's a public skate going on. Or kids hockey or something. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is where not only hockey events happened, but I'm pretty sure they had speed skating and curling here. I'm pretty sure that this is where all of the indoor uh, events happened at the 32 Olympics, but I'll have to fact check myself later. Alright, so now let's go and check out the uh, Herb Brooks 1980 Miracle on Ice rink, which is what I'm extra excited about. Oh, nope. See? I have no idea what I'm talking about. I said the speed skating stuff, everything was held indoors. Nope, clearly they were outdoor. It actually looks like the same place where that new, uh, speed skating Brinkus Hill kind of out there so well they even played okay so never mind I was beyond way off even the hockey matches or hockey games were played outdoors only four teams Canada Germany Poland and the US Okay, so I guess that speed skating rink uh, outside there is just redone because this is exactly that same like around here-ish was where that Origins coffee place was that we got 
Then I got coffee. This is the Great Depression gripped the world. 252 athletes from 17 nations overcame economic hardships and arrived in Lake Placid. So, oh, that's super cool. So the opening ceremonies were even held right out there. All right, how do I see the arena? Am I allowed in here? Wow, I basically have the entire 1980 Miracle on Ice Herb Brooks Arena to myself. The exception of a couple workers down there. That's absurd. So prior to 1986, the uh, International uh, Olympic Committee prohibited the participation of professional athletes in the ice hockey uh, events at the Olympic Games. So prior to 19 and prior to 1986, it was uh, amateurs, people that had spent time in the minors, mainly college kids, at least from the U.S., that played. It was not professional, so not uh, NHL players. So the U.S. followed that rule pretty strictly, but um, the uh, Eastern Europe and Soviet Union in particular kind of found a way to skirt that um, by having essentially like full year, fully trained amateur athletes. So their teams were technically amateurs, they were not professionals, but they trained year round as if they were professionals. So um, and that led to them winning four straight Olympic gold medals uh, leading up to the 1980 games and gave them obviously a major advantage over teams like the US and Canada that were following the rules more strictly. So leading into the uh, 1980 games, it was assumed that the uh, Soviet Union was gonna win easily, again, like they had done in the previous four games. So in 1980, uh, the first game of the medal rounds, the, uh, the hockey, uh, men's hockey, actually ended up seeing the Soviet Union against the United States. And it was assumed that the Soviets were going to, like I said, uh, win easily. But um, what ended up happening was the U.S ended up actually winning four to three and it was essentially a bunch of college kids versus a bunch of professionals and the college kids ended up winning out and then the U.S. ended up going on on the next game and beating Finland to win the gold that year and the Soviets beat Sweden to uh, to get the silver but that event here which for anyone who's familiar with the Olympics Winter Olympics and kind of hockey in general um, I mean, this is a big thing, and I didn't realize it. You could get so close to this. Oh, and I have failed to mention, it's called the Herb Brooks Arena because Herb Brooks was the, the coach of that Miracle on Ice team. And so they have had renovations done in the last year or so. Like these LEDs are obviously new. But I think it was... Uh, they obviously didn't touch the kind of structural integrity of the rink itself here. I cannot believe that other than couple of workers, I'm the only person in here. All right, so I'm curious, if anyone watching this, like, did anyone happen to be here for this game? Or at the very least watch it on TV? I really want to hear your stories about that. I unfortunately wasn't born yet, so I only have to hear about it or only get to hear about it through stories and things like that but 
I know from an American ice hockey history perspective, this rink in this arena holds a lot of history. So this is gonna show my ignorance, but I'm assuming that these are the names of the players on the team. So you had to buy tickets to get into the Olympic Museum, and I mean, I wanted what I wanted to see. I got to see the uh, the 1980 rink. So we're gonna let that go. <clears throat> So I think I mentioned earlier, this was actually redone in the last year. It's a speed skating rink. Um, but this site was where we saw in those pictures that the 1932 hockey matches were held. Hockey games, I don't know what I'm calling them matches. Hockey games were held. Speed skating was held here. Even the opening ceremonies were held here. <laughs> and it butts right up next to... <laughs> the active Lake Placid High School. Can you imagine like you're sitting in English class here and you look out over top of this? I mean, I'm sure you get desensitized too and it just becomes part of the scenery eventually, right? But at least for the first while after you move here. All right, so I don't think anything is back here. So what do you say? We go back to the hotel, grab the car, and we head over to the ski jump and see about heading up to the top of that. You can actually see, I just saw again, <laughs> the ski jump in the distance here. Where is it? Kind of comes into view right about there. So hopefully you can see that right, where is it, right there-ish. So that is where we are going next. And they are much taller and more impressive, I guess, than I realized. I've never seen an Olympic anything before in person, so I have nothing to compare it to, but I was definitely shocked at just how massive uh, they are. So give me a couple minutes and we will go and check that out. Alright, well there is the ski jump up there, and I'm venturing to guess that this doesn't even begin to do it justice on camera. Let us go and check it out. It does not look like the, oh, the gondola is going today. Perfect. Alright, looks like we are in luck. Thank you. Yep. How are you? Good. Can I just get one for the... Uh, the sky ride? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. You can do the um, elevator too. Once you get to the top, Perfect. you can go right up. Okay, I was elevator. hoping that was... Yeah. Yep, it's all one. Now, does one. that go up to the big one? Uh-huh. Okay, yep. cool. So $20, please. I'm sure the big one is the proper term for that, right? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> what I call it. What do you call it? I called the big one. Oh, fair enough. Okay, look at that. It's a lot easier. Yeah, yeah right. So here's your ticket. Okay. Um, did, you, uh, did you need a receipt at all? No, you're all set. Can I just follow them out? Just follow one? them Perfect. out, yeah. Thank you. Absurdly excited about this. This is really awesome, right?
Fingers crossed I get to go up by myself, but I may be with that group of people. You're all set. Keep cool. these handy because you're going to have to show it again when you get to the elevator. Perfect. Thank you. Careful stepping out. Alright, so fingers crossed. This closes on its own. I got, as you heard, like little to no instruction. I didn't even get told to get on this thing. So, uh, hopefully it's closed. Otherwise, I may have a mini panic attack. <coughs> ah, there we go. All right, so, up to the top we go. This is going really slow. Like, I can walk faster than it's going. Well, there it goes. Okay, well, I feel better now. If it was gonna go at that, I can walk faster than this pace, inching up this thing, I was, I was gonna have a little bit of a problem, but it's going way, way, way faster now, so it's good. Good morning. All right. Oops, excuse there me. Go. Take care. All right, so how do I do this elevator the situation? The elevator is straight ahead, kind of behind that silver trailer. Is it pretty inside? obvious, just yeah, the elevator just thing the there? Doorway. There should be somebody inside to get you upstairs. And it's all cool. Awesome, all right. thank you, appreciate it. Where there's an observation deck. Then he said here, there's actually, I guess, I don't know what he called this, but he said there's an observation deck around the corner here that looks straight down, straight down into the, the, uh, the landing zone. So I'm 100% gonna check that out too. Uh, but let's go and take this elevator first. And yeah, it's always interesting. I claim I'm not afraid of heights. And then I go do something that has a little bit of height involved and suddenly, uh, I'm kind of afraid of heights, so this elevator has me a little spooked, but uh, <laughs> gonna make myself do it anyway. I am super stoked to see these views up here. Unlike the the, the uh, Vermont radar base attempted view getting, I feel like this has much more potential to actually. Hello. Hey, how are you? Take it. Good. Cool. Nice, thank you. All right. Are these going to be, oh no, this is going to be a thing, right? Or is it closed? Um, oh no, it's open. So apparently, the highest peaks in the area, potentially all the Adirondacks are out here. Um, I think it might be these two. Oh, look at that stream down there. Or is that right there? Oh, and it's uh... Alright, here we go. So I remember, let's see, where is it? So highest mountains in New York State, okay. So all these are, so Marcy, which is straight ahead, I think it's that, where we have here, that one there somewhere. It's 5,000 feet, 5,300. So I think that's an airport. That is uh, for horse shows. Uh, three more peaks. Apparently, as of yesterday. 
yesterday, you can, you can see these. So the town of Lake Placid, where we were, is right in there. That big building, I'm having a hard time seeing it here, right there, that kind of gray brownish building is the high school. And then right behind it is uh, the Olympic complex. And so then that, where are we at here? That ish area is Mirror Lake, I believe. And then back out, where are we at here? Back out that way this is where actual Lake Placid itself is. Open. Oh, there's a bubble. <laughs> I see. Hmm. Oh, nice. So that's where the ski jumpers. All right, I said it before, ski jumpers are straight crazy people. Oh. It's getting a weird heights feeling. Look how pretty this is. You got a cell phone tower. What do you call those? I don't remember. All right, this is absurdly cool. What do you say we go back down and uh, check out that outdoor observation deck that overlooks the landing spot? All right, well, that was even more crazy than I was expecting. It's exactly what I was hoping for, but I did not actually think that that was going to be like that. I mean, I hope the camera does this some kind of justice at just how massive this thing is. But yeah, it's where we just were, and I can't even look up because that sun is so bright. But assuming the camera can get some of that. So now the guy told me around the corner here, you can go and look straight down the, uh, the landing zone. So let's go and check that out. That looks far less scary from this angle, at least. No, I was just saying it's terrifying, but ah, here we go. Is that wind? Man, you hear the wind whipping through the mountains. All right, so 
we were just up there. Skiers. These people are crazy people. That is craziness. How do you even start to train for something like that? Like, I mean, I'm guessing on little ones, right? Smaller ones like this, and you just kind of work up to it. Alright, well I think that is going to about do it. I may take some more footage tonight uh, or later today walking around downtown again when it gets a little bit darker. Uh, but we will cross that bridge when we get to it in case I don't. This is a great spot to call it it for the uh, Lake Placid walkthrough. So I hope you enjoyed exploring this area with me. If you did, you know the drill, like button, subscribe button, notifications, comments, all that. Any kind of interaction helps grow the channel. And uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed the views and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, bye. Shimmying a lot more on the way down. Wonder why it's doing that. That's terrifying. What do we think? How does it look behind me? Not too bad, right?